So, um, what are you? Well, I'm a furry, but this is a. I'm in a wolf costume right now. Uh, in. <laughs> okay. Um. You, are you sure you're not a fox? You know, people say that to me, and or, or a coyote because I have a long snout. But uh, no, it's a wolf. I'm a wolf. Okay. It, 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 that says Boomer the dog. You're a you're a dog. Yes. What kind of dog are you? Okay. Um. Can I just? I just want to get a selfie with you guys. I just need to take this thing. Say cheese. Yeah. Great. Tell me what a furry is. A furry, I think, is anybody interested in anthropomorphic animals, so animals with human characteristics. But it's much, that's a really broad way to put it. It encompasses community and identity and all of these things. So you're a part of the community. Uh, do you feel that your film gave you know, the community, the fandom furries, a fair overview? Oh, God, I hope so. I mean, it was like I knew that pretending to be unbiased would be a mistake. Um, because I'm part of the community, obviously there are going to be certain things that are influencing me. Um, but I knew that I wanted to go into it as like a filmmaker first and a furry second. Um, I guess people can see the film for themselves and determine whether they think it's a fair light. But I think that's part of the complexity of the film is like knowing that you're not going to be able to represent everybody and sort of embracing that complexity rather than trying to ignore it. You shouldn't be asking who we are. You should ask who we were. <laughs> we, we, we were the fat kid. We were the brainy kid. We were the bookish kid. We were the kid with the big thick glasses. We were the kid concerned about his sexual identity. We were the kid who couldn't throw a baseball. We were the kid who for whatever reason all the other kids said, you don't belong with us. Now human beings as social animals crave companionship. And denying companionship by our peers, we sought it out the next best place we could find it. Some of us looked to the stars, others to the far past of human history. We looked to the happy, smiling, accepting faces that we saw on the Saturday morning cartoons. Do you identify as your animal? I personally don't, um, in the sense that like, I feel like more like a person than anything else. And I feel like, you know, I've, when I introduce myself to people, I prefer the name Dominic. Um, but I mean, I think that a lot of furries, it's different to everybody, and a lot of furries want to look at it more as like a hobby than a lifestyle. But I also think that calling it just a hobby is doing it a disservice, because I think there is something deeper to it for a lot of people, and definitely for me as well, and almost in a way that I can't explain. But it definitely, like, you look at like furry art, for example, and it like, it hits me in like an emotional way that it's hard to define. So. Boomer, do you identify as your animal? Uh, well, I, I guess more than some other furries, I suppose. Uh, you know, I've thought I've been a dog for many years since I was in like elementary school or something. I was calling myself a dog. If you could, would you take your suit out, to, out with you into the world all the time? Would you live in your suit? Well, I'd actually, I mean, I'd want to be the actual anthro dog. I would actually like to really be you know, the dog that I feel that I am. I see it in my mind, and I can see what I would look like. Tell me a little bit about your costume. I mean, it's very, you know, me. tell me a little bit about the boomer costume. So I just, I wanted something different, and I decided to make a costume. But I didn't have, you know, actual fur materials. So I used the idea of doing a paper shredder uh, fur, where I would put paper into a paper shredder, drop it down, and then bring it back up, and it would be a strip of fur pieces. And I could glue them onto clothes, and that's how my costume is actually made. It's a jeans, it's like a regular long sleeve shirt and jeans, and I just hot glued the strips of paper on it. 
And so that made my, uh, you know, uh, shaggy dog costume. So one of the big elements of Personas is Uncle Kage and his influence and his role in the fandom. Why do you think he is so aggressive with wanting control over, you know, media outreach and other aspects of the furry community? That's a very loaded question. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that on, on one hand, uh, he's representing something that furries want, which is furries want a good public image. Furries want to be, a lot of them want to be mainstream and they want to be perceived as a force of good. Um, and I just, I disagree with that approach because I just don't think it's possible because any community you're going to have like a good and bad and many different sides of it. And I just think furry is just, it just is like it, you're going to have like, I think more than anything it's a it's a good community of people but i think that you're going to have a lot of the same problems that you're going to have in any community now to answer your question who are we we are adults who never forgot our old friends other conventions will kind of rotate who's in charge and i think when you have the same person in charge for a long time it's easy to kind of lose sight of maybe why you're actually doing it and what the community is really about why do you think the people think they have the right to ask you about your sex lives because you're a furry? I mean, everybody has sex. I mean, that's also a really good question because when I started this documentary, you know, how do you, one of the questions was like, how do you approach the sexual angle of the fandom? Because I mean, if you go online and you look up furry, you're going to find lots of porn and you're going to find lots of sexual things. And so that's obviously a part of it. So. That was something I struggled with early on was like, does anybody, am I even, is it my right to ask people about this? And then if I ask them, do they owe me an answer? Um, and I don't really know if they do or not. I mean, I guess it's easy to say you shouldn't ask people about their sex lives and none of it's anybody's business. But I mean, I think where it gets tricky is because from the outside, this looks very much like Disneyland. You know, you go to these conventions and it's like, it's like Disneyland, but it's not actually. I mean, it's just, it's a bunch of different people with their different interests and for some people it's sexual and for some people it's not. And I think when people look at that who aren't furries, I think it's easy to kind of just get freaked out by it. Um, but if you get to know people personally, it kind of doesn't matter what they're into if you can get to know somebody on a personal level. So I don't know, I mean, it's really, <laughs> that's like a whole big thing and that's why Sexuality is a part of the film as well, and I thought it was important to address that uh, from a bunch of different angles as well.